Hi, my name's Andy and welcome to this edition of About Capacitors. What I want to do is uh, share my little bit of knowledge about capacitors with you and uh, to show you the different types of capacitors uh, that uh, I've, I've, got, I've got around the house here and uh, tell you a little bit about uh, why they are made the way they are. Um, there's all sorts of uh, interesting facts and figures with uh, capacitors or about capacitors. I don't know all the answers, uh, I don't know everything there is to know about capacitors, but hopefully if you've got a question and it's in the comments box, uh, then uh, somebody that knows more than me uh, will answer that question for you. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll try and cover things like this. This is um, uh, a radio receiver capacitor, um, the tuning capacitor that you'll have turned many times, I'm sure. But it's non-linear, and I'll, I'll try and explain why. Why, why do we want a non-linear capacitor? Um, I'll talk about electrolytics and ceramic capacitors. Um, so I hope you find it interesting. This little box probably holds the oldest capacitor that I've got here at the time of making this video in 2011. This little crystal set is 87 years old. It was made in 1924. It has two mica capacitors inside. There's one. And uh, there's the other. These are both fixed capacitors. Uh, the tuning in this crystal set is carried out by uh, altering the coils. These are very basic capacitors, uh, but they work as well today as uh, they did when they were made nearly 90 years ago. And uh, in another 90 years, uh, they'll still be fine. The required capacitance value is achieved by having a number of plates, either foil, copper foil or silver foil plates, separated by thin sheets of mica and uh, the mica is uh, an insulator and uh, it has a dielectric quality which we'll talk about later okay i'm going to set to make a uh, little capacitor using the materials that i've got at hand so i'm not designing this i'm simply using up materials that i've got well that's uh, captan uh, or capton um, uh, it's a uh, high temperature, uh, high quality insulation, it just happens to be some that I have. Uh, this is uh, copper foil and uh, we really want this flat. So just got an ordinary six inch wall. I'll just dress that down. There. I so say we want it flat and uh, by rubbing it with the rule just gently I'm doing it so as it's, it's going like that working on a piece of cardboard and we can flatten it very nicely like that if you press very hard on there it'll curl and this is, uh, you may have seen the, the girls in the florists doing this uh, with a ribbon on the end of a pair of scissors. Uh, that's exactly the same way that the spring that recoils your seat belt in the car is made. They actually draw the hardened and tempered metal over the top of a pyramid uh, shaped knife. And uh, it just... Uh, puts tension in the one side but you can see there I can get that plenty flat enough for what we're setting out to do here so I'll do that with a few more sheets this is actually some copper foil uh, of a type that I used to use for building uh, high power high frequency uh, output transfer well, transformers but it's it's coming very useful for all sorts of things 
Okay, when uh, they're making uh, high frequency capacitors or high voltage capacitors, it's very important that there are no sharp edges because um, any marks or dents like this uh, cause um, uh, a corona. So uh, they, it will actually, um, sparks will take off from the sharp edges. Whereas if it's dressed and smoothed, uh, then uh, it'll, it'll stand at a little bit higher voltage before it flashes over. Okay, so I've uh, prepared three bits like that, and I'm going to cut them down now into smaller pieces. So this is my old uh, guillotine, and uh, I have a strip of uh, magnetic rubber here that I use as a guide, and I'm going to set this at about four centimeters there. I want to cut these at about four centimeters, so I'll just clean up that first edge. Don't use your mum's best guillotine for cutting copper. Okay, I'll carry on cutting these. And again, I'll just A very sharp edge after it's uh, been cut with a guillotine because it uh, it has a tendency to uh, fold the the edge down a little bit and uh, leave quite a quite a raw edge there. I so say you can do this and bend it uh, like that. But equally, you can just tease it gently and flatten it. And knowing that, you can do that in all sorts of mechanical things. Um, uh, it's just a little wrinkle, or, or not a wrinkle as the case may be. So I've now got uh, 13 uh, little capacitor plates. It's, it's good to have uh, an odd number. Uh, I'll go into that another time. Light on the job. Um, they're, uh, they're sitting reasonably uh, flat together. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll cut the insulation now. So I'm going to uh, set this to uh, uh, 50 millimeters. There. And uh, I'll put some of this capped on. It's a devil to cut this stuff. It's uh, very tough. I'm going to cut 15 of uh, these so as I've got one between uh, each leaf and uh, one either side at the end. Okay, I've got my uh, 15 plates and uh, what I'm going to do is have uh, six on one side and uh, uh, seven on the other and I'm just going to peg them together. Uh, when they make uh, capacitors cleanliness is vital anywhere where you're um, handling uh, film strip um, it's uh, very difficult because you generate a lot of static and uh, I was talking to one of the engineers from uh, the company Sellotape and he said uh, one of their biggest problems was uh, preventing static as the, uh, uh, as, the, as the tape moved at such high speed. I'm just soldering the ends of these together. You can't, I'm using copper be simply because I can solder it together. You can solder aluminium, but boy, it's a, it's a very devil to, uh, to do. Okay, that's, that should have those. Yeah, they're all consolidated. It just makes the assembly a little bit easier to, 
deal with, I hope. So, which is the one with the, uh, the most in? One, two, three, four, five, six. Right, so that one's going to be inside. Either I cut a spear or I've got one left over. We'll soon find out. Okay, so I didn't leave one out. I'm going to clamp the assembly together with uh, a couple of bits of wood. Um, I never said it was going to be an attractive capacitor, did I? You need to make sure that the uh, plates aren't overlapping the insulation. And uh, by the way, the, um, when I said I'd soon find out putting the meter on it, if there was a piece of insulation missing, of course, I'd have a, a short circuit from one side to the other. If there are any apprentices out there, that's a half knot. Uh, that one's a full knot, and this one's a half knot. It's literally half the thickness. So uh, if they send you to, to the stores to get some half knots, that's okay. But if they send you for a long wait, then they're pulling your leg. Okay. Right, so that should be a capacitor. I don't know what its value is, but uh, we'll measure it. Just put some uh, leads on the capacitor. If you can learn to solder like this, it's very helpful because it's like having a third hand. If if you can, if you can take care of the solder there, then you can uh, you can dab that on there. Okay, so we'll uh, put that on the bridge and uh, see what it is. Okay, I've got the capacitor coupled across the bridge. I don't know if the camera is picking up the oscillator, but there's a little oscillator in here. And uh, I'm set on the 10,000 picofarad range, and then uh, this uh, dial is a multiplier. and. Um, that's point 0.1, point 0.2. I'm looking for this needle to come to zero. So, you know, tune in there. And, and that's the null there. So that's saying 10,000 picofarads times point 0.3 on this outer scale and then four on the inner scale. So that's 3,400 picofarads, or if you prefer, it's 0.0034 microfarads. I hope you found that interesting. If you've got some uh, points you'd like to raise, please put them in the comments box or email me. And um, uh, if I can't answer the question, then hopefully uh, there'll be somebody else out there that'll, that'll pick it up. So uh, uh, if you are an old hand, please look down the comments box and see if there's any unanswered questions. Uh, that uh, you can answer because uh, hopefully that'll help other people. The internet's been a big help to me and I'd like to put something back in and help folks. So I hope you find this interesting. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.